Hello there. Welcome to this week's story time. Now we've got a couple of people joining, so I will just wait for a second while we all arrive. It's lovely to see you here. So hello to those of you who are currently joining. And as always, I'm going to start this session. This is our penultimate story time. Now, I don't know whether any of you know what penultimate means, but penultimate is the one before the last one. So next week is going to be our last storytelling session. So this is our penultimate session, the one before the last one. Um, so it's great that you're all here again. We've got some familiar names I can see. So can I ask you as normal to pop in the chat box your name? and your age if you'd like and whereabouts you are calling from. So again I'll start us off, I'm Rachel and I'm calling from Topness in Devon. It's a really rainy day here today. We've got Reef from Ormskirk age nine, hello again Reef. good to see you. We've got Ida age four from Brighton, hello Ida, I think both of you have definitely you've been before so it's great to have you back. Um, who else have we got here today? Anyone else familiar or anyone else want to share in the chat who they are? You don't have to share, um, but it's always nice to see who we've got. We've got my great friend Carolina who's with us again today, who I'm going to be introducing in a second. Uh, we've got Bo from Birmingham. Hello again, Bo. We've got Evie and Jess who are age seven from Ormkirk. Uh, I'm sad, Reef. it's the second to last one too. Yeah, we've really loved doing these, but the good news is we've recorded all of them, so you can watch them all again, and I'll be sharing with mums and dads and, and, and adults where you can watch them again, and also hopefully we'll do some more again later in the year, because it's it's been a really nice time for us as well. But we've got two more to, to go through, so let's not get sad just yet. Um, so as I said, while we're all still settling in and saying hello, we've got Carolina who is reading the story again today. Now, Carolina read a story for us two weeks ago and Carolina doesn't live near where I live in England. She lives very far away. Can any of you remember which country Carolina lives in? And she will tell you this if you can't remember, but any of you who were here last time that Carolina read a story, she lived in a different country and she showed us out of her window and she said it was a really, really hot place. Anybody remember? Oh, well done, Reef. It's Brazil. Yes, that's great. And that's great, Jessica and Evie, that you watch the stories all the time. That's lovely to hear. I'm really delighted that you're watching them. So anyway, enough from me. I'm going to hand straight over now to Carolina, who's going to read today's story, and I'll see you all again at the end. So over to you, Carolina. Hello, everyone. You can all hear me? Yes. Great. Um, so I am really happy to be here and share the story with all of you. And I'm so glad that we are in different places in the world, um, but we can be all here together. So I am going to share my screen with you to remind you where I am. So just give me one moment while I do that. Let's see. Okay, and share screen, all right. So, like I showed you last time, I am here in the south, in Brazil, whilst most of you are here in the north, where it says thought box, in the orange box. Now, I'm gonna show you something else about my country. This is a Brazilian, um, carrot cake with chocolate icing and it's a special kind of chocolate icing called Brigadeiro. And you must be wondering why am I showing you a picture of a cake, right? <laughs> well, actually our story today is about cakes. It is called Otter's Best Cake. So we're going to start the story now. You can Read along as I do, or you can close your eyes and imagine it. All right, let's go. All right, so it was the annual Woodland Summer Fair, and everyone had agreed to bake a cake to bring along to the gathering. Otter was feeling worried. He'd never baked a cake before and wasn't really sure how to do it. 
he had all of the ingredients and the instructions, but felt really rather confused about how to go about it and not very confident at all. He decided to go and ask his good friend Dormouse as she was always baking cakes. Her nest was high up in the treetops across the other side of the glade. When he got to her tree, he saw her wearing her bright yellow apron covered in flour and holding a rather large mixing bowl and wooden spoon. Hi there, Otter. How are you this morning? Are you all ready for the celebrations this afternoon? Morning, Dormouse. Uh, I'm feeling a little worried, if I'm honest. And I've come to see you to ask a very important question. Dormouse, how do you bake a cake? Well, I bake cakes up in the trees. I like to be really high in the sky and perch on the edge of a branch while I stir, stir, stir. And with that, Dormouse stood tiptoe on the very edge of a large branch of the tree as she whisked her cake mixture so fast, it made Otter feel dizzy. Thanks for the advice, Dormouse, said Otter glumly. I'd better get back to my cake and he sloped off feeling rather discouraged. As he walked, he thought to himself, I don't like heights and don't know how to climb a tree. And so I will never be able to bake a cake the way Dormouse does. My cake will never be as good as Dormouse's cake. He decided to go and see his friend Snail who's lived just around the corner. When he arrived, Snail was tucked inside his house, stirring a little tiny bowl very, very slowly. Good morning, Otter. How are you this morning? Have you baked your cake yet? Said Snail, smiling up at Otter. Hello there, Snail. <sighs> I'm feeling a little bit nervous about my baking. And so I've come to see you to ask a very important question. Snail, how do you bake a cake? Well, I bake cakes very slowly indeed. I started making this cake three days ago, as it takes me a very long time to stir. And Snail moved the teeny weeny spoon inside the teeny weeny bowl so slowly, Otter thought that he got the spoon stuck. Thanks for the advice, Snail, said Otter. I'd better get back to my cake. And he ambled off, feeling even more anxious. As he walked, he thought to himself, I don't like doing things slowly, and I'm not very good at doing the same thing for three days. And so I will never be able to bake a cake the way Snail does. My cake will never be as good as Snail's cake. He decided to go and ask his friend Bird, who always had good advice to offer to her friends. When he got to Bird's nest, he heard Bird singing loudly stirring her cake and chirp, chirp, chirping as she stirred. 
Good morning, otter, sang Bird with a beautiful trill. How are you today? Good morning, Bird. I'm not feeling so happy this morning as I'm very worried about baking my cake for the Woodland Fair. I've come to see you to ask a very important question. Bird, how do you bake a cake? Well, I get up early before the sunshine and start stirring my cake as fast as I can as the first rays of sun come over the horizon. And then I start singing my heart out. Sing and stir, sing and stir. That's how I like to bake my cake. Bird sang cheerily as she stirred the mixture. Uh, thanks for the good advice, Bird, said Otter gloomily. I'd better get started on my cake. And he wandered off, his tail between his legs. As he walked, he thought to himself, I don't like getting up early and I'm not very good singing at all. And so I will never be able to bake a cake the way Bird does. My cake will never be as good as Bird's cake. He decided to head back home. On the way, he walked past a beautiful yellow flower and saw his friend, Bumblebee, perched on a petal, buzzing loudly as he collected some of the pollen. Hi there, Bee. I'm on my way home to bake my cake for the Woodland Fair this afternoon and would like to ask you a very important question. B, how do you bake a cake? Well, buzzed B, I like to make my cake whilst buzz, buzz, buzzing as I go. When I have finished, I head out to collect my special secret ingredient. I move from flower to flower and collect as much pollen as I can and then sprinkle it on top of my cake to make super duper yummy scrummy icing. Oh dear, thought Otter. I don't know how to make buzz, buzz, buzz noises. And I wouldn't be able to collect nectar from flowers as I'm too big to sit on them. I couldn't ever bake a cake the way Bee does. My cake will never be as good as Bee's cake. And with that, he walked slowly home, thinking hard. On the way home, Otter thought about what he had learned from his friends about baking cakes. As he thought, he had more thoughts, and then more thoughts, and then more thoughts. And then suddenly, he stopped walking, thinking really hard. Hmm, let me think. Dormouse likes to bake her cake up in a tree, but she doesn't stir it slowly like Snail. Snail? likes to stir his cake slowly, but he doesn't sing loudly like Bird. Bird likes to sing loudly, but she doesn't sprinkle pollen on the top like Bee. Bee likes to sprinkle pollen on his cakes, but he doesn't climb a tree like Dormouse. Hmm, maybe there's more than one way to make a cake? And suddenly, Otter had a really big and exciting thought. Maybe I can make a cake like an otter because I can do that really well. 
And with that thought, Otter dashed back home, grabbed his bowl and his spoon, the ingredients and the instructions, and set off to bake his cake whilst doing all of the things that otters love to do. He dived into the water and splashed on the riverbank with his friends and lay on his back, floating along in the water as he stirred the cake as gleefully as could be. Later at the party, Otter gathered around the table with all of his friends to admire all of the delicious looking cakes that the woodland creatures had baked for the fair. Otter's cake was sitting in the middle of the table and looked really scrumptious. Wow, Otter, said Otter's friends. Your cake is really wonderful. Can we ask you a question? How do you bake a cake? Well, said Otter, smiling widely, I bake my cake in the only way that I can, which is also the best way I can. I bake my cake like an otter. And with that, the friends all cheered and sliced themselves some rather large pieces of cake, all of them happy that they had each baked a cake in the very best way that they could. The end. All right. Ooh, what a story, huh? I hope you liked it as much as I did. Now, who likes cake? I do. And this story made me feel a little bit hungry. But this story isn't just about cake. Oh, I see somebody likes cake here, Reef, yeah. I know. Um, but so this story is not just about cake. Me too, Lindsay. Yes, I see that we all really like cake. Um, but as I said, it's not just about cake, right? It's about some other things. And so I'm going to ask you all a couple of questions so that we can all understand what this story is also about. So my first question is, who is the main character? Let's see if you guys can remember. The main character, who is this story about? Otter, that's right. This story is about Otter. But what happens that makes him feel so anxious and worried? What is it? He wasn't feeling good most of the story. Let's see if we have some answers. Mm, we have a lot of thoughts. Baking, yes, baking. So he was anxious and worried that he couldn't bake. He didn't know how to bake like his other friends did. So do you remember who he went for help when he couldn't bake his cake? Ooh, let's see, we have an answer here. He thinks he does not know how to make a cake, but he actually can, that is very true. He can make a cake. And now we have another answer about who he went for help. So we have bird, we have snail, who else? Bee, that's right, we're missing one. Let's see if we can get that one. Right in the beginning of the story. He was able to go up a tree, snail, dormouse, everyone very good. So we have bird, snail, bee, snail again, dormouse again. <laughs> you guys are great, very good. So let's think about how many cakes that they all had. Let's count together. There was bird's cake, snail's cake, bee's cake, dormouse's cake, and of course, otter's cake. Now, 
can you guys imagine how those cakes look like? Because I can imagine different colors, different icing, different flavors. So I'm going to ask you now, tell me how you would make your cake. Would it be whilst you're singing, while you're dancing, or talking on the phone? Or you can tell me also what kind of flavor you would make your cake. Would it be strawberry or chocolate, vanilla maybe? So you can tell me any of those things. <laughs> like a human does, getting messy. Oh my gosh, I know. It's just like, who was it? I think it was, um, be no bird who had the flower all over her her clothes oh i can see vanilla chocolate cake mm, that sounds nice well i can see that let's see let's see if we have one more answer i'll wait just a moment i think i would make mine with a lot of icing and maybe vanilla and chocolate i'd put everything together so we all do things a little bit different, but Otter, when he went to ask his friends for help, he started comparing himself to them and he started feeling inadequate and not so good. So do you compare yourself to others sometimes? Oh, I can see an answer from before <laughs> about you would be playing on your iPad whilst making a cake. Wow. <laughs> All right. So, oh, it was Dormas. Thank you, Reef, so much. It was Dormas that had, okay. And now I am seeing an answer for the one I asked. Do you compare yourselves to others? I can see a no. Does anybody else compare themselves to others or not? Let's see if we have an answer. You know, I do sometimes. I compare myself a little bit to others and, oh, I have a sometimes. Exactly. I sometimes do too. And it doesn't make me feel very good. But we can all learn things from people that are different from us like our family, our teachers, our friends. And what I try to remember is not to feel inadequate, not to feel bad, because we have all different skills and gifts and things that we can do really well. So it's that particular mix of things that we can do and things that we like to do that makes us unique. So. We're going to try to do one thing together. And I know we can't all see each other, but I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. And if it's a yes, you're going to make a little dance. And if it's a no, you can just um, turn your head from side to side as a no. Okay, so for example, I can ask, do you know more than one language? I do. So I'll do a little dance. All right, so are you ready? All right, the first question is, are you ticklish? Second one, do you like helping others? Third one, are you shy? And last one, do you like asking questions and being curious? <laughs> all right, guys. So I know that we're all more than these questions, but it's good to know that we're all a little different because even though I can't see you, I can see your answers. And some of you have said yes to my questions and some of you have said no. But we are all unique, just like Dormouse, Snail, Bird, Bee, and Otter. I mean, imagine if all the cakes that they did, five cakes, were all the same. You would have the same five cakes. Wouldn't that be boring? <laughs> so there's more than one way 
to make a cake. What's important is to be true to yourself and enjoy the differences in others and celebrate your own. So for my last, last question, I'm gonna ask you to think about one thing that makes you unique. There's lots of things, I'm pretty sure, but let's share with each other one thing that makes you unique. I'll wait. You know, sometimes I think that me being Brazilian in the way that I am is unique. And I like particular books and I can dance a certain way. And some people can dance too, but I dance in my own unique way. And we can see here to look after my dog. That's great. I have dogs too. And I have a unique way of taking care of my dog. And my sister, she takes care of her dog in a different way, which is all okay. We learn from each other. We have good dancer, look after my cats. I, I used to have a cat too, and I used to take care of my cat. And that made me unique too. Maybe another answer before I leave. We are heading to the end and it makes me so sad because I really enjoyed being here with you and hearing all about your uniqueness because what makes us different is what makes the world so cool and beautiful. Oh, here we have another answer that I like reading and I care for my dog more than I used to. And another one that I have a fish, yes. Well, we all have different pets too, that makes us different. <laughs> so maybe one day we can all learn from each other how to take care of different pets. Well, I am gonna go now, almost. Um, and I just wanna say that I really enjoyed being here. And um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for everything. Enjoy and have a great afternoon. Back to you, Rachel. Thank you so much, Carolina. Now that was just a wonderful story. I've been dancing in my chair and I've been dreaming about cake. I don't know about you, but that's made me really super hungry. I also, Carolina, can you tell us again the name of that beautiful Brazilian cake that you showed us at the very beginning? Of course. So it's a carrot cake, just like you have, but it's a little bit different. Um, also, we say cenoura for carrot, mm -hmm. and then on top is a chocolate icing called brigadeiro, mm -hmm. and we do those for birthdays a lot. Mm -hmm. So if you ever find uh, yourselves in a Brazilian party, you will find that cake or you will find brigadeiro. I'm sure. <laughs> Wonderful. Brigadeiro. Maybe one of us, we could have a go at cooking a brig Brigadeiro one day. I might have a try next time I see Carolina. But thank you so much, Carolina, for that wonderful story. And I hope you've all enjoyed learning about Otter's Best Cake. Now, as I said at the beginning, we have one more story time to go. And we're super duper lucky because guess who's going to be reading us this story next time? It's our good friend Carolina again. She's going to join us for one more time. So we'll see you all next week at four o'clock. Don't forget, you can watch these, these stories again. I think we had Jesse and Evie said that they watch them all the time, which is great. So you can watch them again. But we will see you live again next Wednesday at four o'clock for our last story time of this season. Have a lovely afternoon, all of you. See you soon. <laughs>